Okay, hello and welcome to the first Gartree ADT TV YouTube tutorial for Photoshop. Um, we've left Photoshop to towards the end because we've um, we've got quite a lot to go through with Photoshop. Um, the first thing I want to point out to you today is that I'm running Photoshop from a Mac. I'm not running it from the Windows computers like we have in school, and that was simply because I wanted to be able to video what was going on and show you guys. So let's begin. First thing I'm going to do is open up Safari which is my Internet Explorer, it's my web browser, and I'm going to go to odeb.itslearning.com and that's going to allow me to get onto the school VLE and access the Photoshop tutorial um, guide that I've put into a graphics all years folder for you. So odeb.itslearning.com, log in with your username, and at the top we're going to go to Courses, and then Graphics All Years, and then within there, on the left hand side, you should see we've got Photoshop support. I've pulled that out of the other folders so that you won't get confused. And Photoshop guidance is the document that you're looking for. And if you just click on that link there and press open or go to your downloads folder and have a look at that file when it opens. So let's have a look at it. Okay, it should open up on PowerPoint and we'll just launch that in the bottom corner. And once it's open, it's got a very kind of familiar scene to what we've uh, seen on some of the other tutorials. Shows you how to open a Photoshop, and it does also say that you need to take copious notes, lots and lots of notes for this, because there's so much information I'm going to throw at you. At the top, we've got our skills, which by the end of this tutorial, you should be able to recount the basic introductory steps of Photoshop. Knowledge to know about each of the basic tools and their functions, and to understand how to apply some of the basic steps of designing. Along the bottom, we've got all of our steps for moving through, navigating through the PowerPoint, and we're just going to move on to the first one here now. Okay, now once you've got Photoshop open by following the steps on screen, so start all programs, design, and Photoshop. Um, you'll see that the screen that pops up has got a grey background to it and it's got the kind of blue icon. Around the edge of the screen here you can see that we've got um, lots of different tools and settings, most of which are going to be unfamiliar to you. Um, and We've got this big blue icon floating in the middle of the screen. Photoshop is often shortened down to just PS or sometimes PSD which is the file format um, and it's got this kind of blue background to it. Right, next slide then. So the window is the first thing we're going to look at. We're then going to look at the documents and workings, how to start a new document, um, the premise of layers, and how to rasterize as well. You might have heard that word before. Some of the main tools, blending options and shortcuts. First of all, we're going to look at the window. And you can see here, we've got that initial screen set up. Along the top, we've got a bar called the menu bar, which works in just the same way as Word or PowerPoint. Um, you can see we've got things like file and edit and image, which are all fairly kind of familiar to you. Um, but there are also some of the uh, other settings like filter um, and analysis, maybe even view or window, which we might touch on. Down the left-hand side, we've got something called the toolbar. Now, this holds all of the different tools, almost like your pencil case of equipment that you might use when, when working on Photoshop, um, which is going to allow you to draw, select, and manipulate things on screen. It's worth noting on each of these tools, there's actually so many tools on Photoshop that you have to click and hold on each of them in order to access some of those additional tools to see what's up on screen. Um, so click and hold on anything that's got that little arrow in the bottom corner. And then along the top, this is the best thing about Photoshop, is this, this bar along the top here changes depending on which tool you've got. So you don't need all the settings, access to all the settings all the time. You only need to be able to change each tool one at a time. And then in the bottom corner, we've got a window called the Layers window, which we're going to revisit later on. But the most important thing you need to remember today is that every time you add something new, you're going to do it on a new layer. Right, documents and workings then. The first thing I'm going to do is show you how to open up a new document. Now, this is quite complicated. Um, it's actually going to be one of the most time-consuming things that we're going to go through today. Um, but the first thing you need to do is just go File New, just like you would on a Word document. So File and New. And then this little window here pops up. Um, and we've got all the settings that we can change for our documents, a bit like page setup on Word, um, but we do this before we start a document um, because there's so many different ways that you can work on Photoshop. You might have different sizes or um, different qualities of image. So first thing we can do is change our name if we want to. You don't have to. I'm going to leave it as untitled one today. Um, and then we've got some more settings further down. So 
Um, we've got things like the size of the paper, width, height, resolution, colour mode. Uh, all these things are, are quite complicated. Um, but I'm going to go through each one, one by one, to explain to you why we've made some of these choices that we have today um, and what changes and choices you might make um, to these kind of default settings. OK, so the first thing that you need to be aware of is international paper. Um, international paper is uh, the heading that goes over all the kinds of paper that we might be able to use in different parts of the world. Um, they've standardised paper so that if you go to pretty much any of the countries in the world and you were to go and buy a ream of A4 paper, that A4 paper is going to be exactly the same size um, and will work in any printer um, uh, anywhere wherever you are. So we've got certain settings like A4 and A3, A2, A1, A0, etc. Um, that, that you'll be familiar with. Uh, and Photoshop knows these too. So these are called international paper sizes. As you can see, at the moment we've got international A4, which uses 210 millimeter by 297 millimeter size paper. Now that means um, when you change each of these settings, um, the 210, the 297 will change. So if we go up to A3, for example, that width is going to double to 420, but the height will stay the same because A4 is, um, is, is half the size of an A3, so two A4s is one A3. Right, the next setting that we're going to have a look at is resolution. Now resolution works just the same as your TVs at home might do, or your, you know, your iPhones or whatever. Um, 300 dpi, 300 pixels per inch um, is the suitable kind of quality of image that we want to be working in. A pixel is a single dot of colour. It's just one, one kind of very simple plain dot. And then our eye puts all of these individual dots together to make a picture. So uh, a screen has um, thousands and thousands of these little dots in order to make up a very high quality picture. And because the size of the picture might change, we can't say exactly how many um, uh, how many pixels might be in one given area um, and, and measure those comparatively. What we tend to do is look at a square inch from a low quality or a high quality picture and we say how many pixels that image has got per inch. So PPI, DPI, pixels per inch, dots per inch, they all mean the same thing. Um, and we're looking at 300 pixels per inch in school. And that's just because that's that's what kind of the, the human eye picks upon comfortably. It's what a lot of printers work in. Um, some kind of large scale printing in, in order to um, in order to make images uh, a bit smaller and a bit easier to handle will work in 72 DPI, so that's 72 dots per inch. But that's really low quality printing. Typically we tend to work in 300. Right, the next setting is the color mode. Now, there's two separate color modes that we can work in. And it's basically like saying what colours in the palette are going to be available when you're using Photoshop today. So we're going to just look at two, and there's two settings that you'll use. Um, and the first one, which is the one that this, this uh, Photoshop is preset to at the moment, is RGB. Now RGB is, um, it works best for anything that's on the internet or going on a network or on a computer screen. So um, this is how a screen tends to think about colour. A screen, is still made up of pixels, but each of the kind of colours of those pixels is controlled by four little lights inside. There is a white light, a red, green, and a blue light. So by combining the red and the blue, you're going to get a kind of purple colour, and then more or less white will take that from a, a, a very light colour all the way through down to a much darker colour. So in order to control all the colours of the rainbow that you might see, um, you're going to have each pixel controlled by a red, green, blue, and a white a uh, little white diode. Right, so that's RGB. So that works best for anything that's going to go onto a screen. But what if what you, you're working on is ultimately going to be printed out? And that's going to cover most of the things that you do in school. So that might be um, a computer games cover, or a poster, or a publication, or a portrait, anything like that that's going to be printed off, whether it's on a canvas printer or our, our laser printers in school. Well, we need to think about how the printer works in terms of colour. So the printer works using four different colour ink cartridges. Now some of your printers at home might use less, they might use more. Um, our canvas printer for example uses a huge amount of colours, I think it's uh, between 12 or 16 colours depending on what you're using. Um, so we're going to be using this, the, um, the colour mode that's best suited to the laser printers in school, um, which is CMYK. Now C is cyan, which is our blue. Magenta, M is our pink. Y is yellow, um, and then K is actually key, and I've got it down here as black, but so that you can remember it as black, it's B-L-A-C-K. Now, the reason why um, I think that they use uh, 
the blue and black they use cyan and um, and kian are because these two these two words are, are totally different from one another you can imagine if you're looking at an ink cartridge that's got um, blue written on the end of it and black written on the end of it, it might just have the letter b or bl you might get confused and swap those over so, I, so by shortening those down to a c and a k it avoids any of that confusion um, that is just something you're going to have to get used to so we've got two color modes overall we've got rgb and cmyk Okay, so now we're going to look at layers, um, which are how a Photoshop document works, really. Um, if you imagine something very basic, like a leaflet that's got a, a coloured background to it, some text boxes, uh, maybe a couple of shapes on it, um, that image is going to be made up of lots of different things layered upon top of each other, like a sandwich. Here's what this image might look like, kind of expanded outwards. Um, but on the right-hand side here, you can see this is how this image would look like. Um, to Photoshop. It's got a background at the bottom, so it's at the back, and then it's got a series of other boxes with text layered on top of those um, in order to make it work. So we see all the way through those layers when we look at this document, but this is how Photoshop thinks about it. Um, the next thing. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you is called rasterizing. Um, and rasterizing is quite an advanced principle of Photoshop, really. Um, but once you understand it, um, it kind of shows you a long way to understanding how the, the software works and how it thinks. Um, Photoshop works on basically dividing everything we put onto that page into two key categories. Now I've got some definitions here that I'm going to read to you. Um, the first is objects, and objects are items like text or shapes, um, things that can be stretched or compressed without changing how they look. So if you think about the letters ADT, if we were to type this into a text box and scale them up so they were really big or really small, they wouldn't change, they would still look kind of nice and sharp and clean and crisp. Um, but the other type is images. If we had a photograph of the school, for example, uh, and we stretched that and made it bigger or smaller, it would start to distort and to pixelate. Photoshop would do its best to avoid that, but it would still pixelate quite a lot. So objects are useful um, because their quality is always really high. Um, you can make them and you can change them, manipulate them, do what you want to do with them. Um, but we can manipulate images a lot more. So if we want to warp things or, or adjust them around, skew them around a bit, um, we can we need to um, to, to rasterize each image. So we're going to turn it from being uh, from an object into an image. And this is how we do it. So we're going to look at the item that we want to rasterize, look at the layer we want to rasterize. So in this, uh, in this image here, we've got um, the word rasterize, which has been written in a text box. In order to rasterize, we're going to right click on the, the blue part of the layer um, and click rasterize type. Now remember, we can rasterize type or text. We can also rasterize shapes. And this is going to turn them into photographs, really, of that item. Now, that means that once you rasterize a text box, you're not going to go, be able to go back in and, and edit that text box. So you need to be careful of spelling. You need to make sure that um, it's in the correct font, the correct size, shape, dimensions, everything else that, you're, is, that you've chosen for that, all the settings of that text, all that image, uh, sorry, all that object are, are set before you turn it into an image. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at the main tools, which are accessed down the left-hand side of your Photoshop screen. Um, along the top, we've got our menu bar. Um, just below the menu bar, we've got our settings bar, and that's going to change each time we choose a different tool. And then, yeah, just below it down on the left-hand side, we've got our, our, all our different tools. Um, now, the one that's selected is always going to be kind of grey, it has a kind of button appear around it um, and you'll see that some of these tools have got a little arrow in the bottom corner. Um, we're going to revisit that very shortly. So here they are. These are the tools that you're going to be using uh, most frequently in ADT. Um, we've got the move tool, the marquee tool, which is your kind of square select tool. We've got the brush tool, which you'll notice hasn't got anything else around. It is just the tip of the paintbrush. There's lots of different ones that look similar, so don't be confused. The eraser tool, which is fairly similar to uh, paint and other things like that. Um, we've got the gradient tool, which in itself isn't used too much yet. You'll use that towards the end of year nine, perhaps. Um, but the paint bucket's behind there. Um, the text box tool, which is just like a text box on PowerPoint or, or other similar bits of software. The shapes tool and the color palettes. Now, when it comes to color palettes, there's actually a few things that we want to, to mention. Um, in design, we tend to work with colour schemes, so it's quite likely that you'll want to flick backwards and forwards between a couple of different colours. Um, so you can see here that we've got black as the colour that's been chosen, and white as our kind of backup colour that we could flick to if we want to. Um, in order to actually flip between the two, you'll need to click the arrow tool uh, that goes between the two of them. Um, 
if we want to reset, we've got the, the black and white um, icon at the top just above. And, and if we flick backwards and forwards with them as, as much as we want to, you know, as a moment required. OK, so now we're going to look at blending options. Now, blending options are effects that you can apply to a whole layer. So let's say you want to apply a shadow to a shape that you've just drawn or you want it to have an outline to it or a glow or you want it like it's been pressed in. We tend to do this to the whole layer because remember every time we have something new on Photoshop we've got it on a separate layer. So um, we could apply an outline or a glow or whatever to that whole layer all at once. In order to do that we're going to right click on the layer um, and select blending options. Um, another option might be that you're going to double click on the blue part of the layer, that's what I tend to do, so that blue part that comes around it, that's, that's where I'd click. Uh, and we get a window open that looks a bit like this. Um, now you can see we've got all these different blending options down the left hand side and we've got all the settings for each one, they, these kind of change in the main window over here. Um, some top tips for you. These, this kind of window that's appeared on the right hand side here is just the default screen. It doesn't have anything to do with any of the settings that we 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 want to change. So if we want to apply an outline, for example, if we just click on the tick box next to the word stroke, um, that's not going to allow us to change the settings. It's just going to turn on a stroke or an outline. Um, if we want to change the settings specifically, what we need to do is actually click onto the word stroke. And once we click on the word stroke, this right hand window over here is going to change for you uh, and allow us to change as much as we want to. So it might be to change the, the colour or the thickness or whatever. And that's that for, for blending options. So um, the next thing that I want to go over with you is the shortcuts that you can use. Now this is something that you're going to pick up as you gain in confidence. Um, we've got settings here like the, the text box uh, or let's say that we're going to be using the text box to draw a word out and the move tool to move that text for example. By clicking T on your keyboard you're going to uh, access the text box tool and by clicking V you're going to get the move tool. Um, so those two different buttons there are going to save time of you having to click and find each tool on the left hand side. Um, especially if you're using kind of both hands on your, so one hand on your keyboard, one hand on your mouse. Um, we've got other settings like the magic wand tool and the lasso tool as well on your keyboard. Um, so W is wand, L is lasso. Um, so depending on what it is that you want to, to which tool you want to use, most of the 90% of the time um, do kind of follow follow an order. They do make sense. If you want to use the wand tool, you're going to click W. If you want to use the, the lasso tool, you're going to click L. Um, the eyedropper is a letter I. Um, so, so they do make sense. The next thing I want to, to draw your attention to is Z, X, C and V, which are the bottom four keys on your keyboard. Control Z is the undo and redo buttons. We use these a lot. Um, so this undoes just one step, a single step, and lets you bounce backwards and forwards. So undo, redo, undo, redo. It'll only undo that one step. The next one, we've got Control or Command, as I've got on screen here, because I'm on a Mac. Um, so if you press Control and X, You'll notice that letter X looks a little bit like a pair of scissors. So Control X is going to allow you to cut some things. If you want to, if you draw a, sh uh, a box around a shape that you want to cut, we draw a box around it. We press Control X; it's going to cut it. If we look at the the letter V, um, skipping out C for a second, that, that that almost in my head almost looks like the tip of a kind of paintbrush uh, or a pasting brush. So in order to paste down, we press Control V to paste. So Control X to cut. Control V to paste, and sometimes we don't want to cut, we just want to copy, so Control C is in between. So we've got Control Z to undo, redo, Control X to cut, Control C to copy, and Control V to paste. The last step might be that you want to uh, undo more than one step. So if we want to undo more than that, we're going to press Alt while we do that. So it's Control Alt Z is to undo or to step backwards more than once. So Control alt z over and over again is going to step backwards, step backwards, step backwards dozens of times. It doesn't always to kind of include every step that you've done, but it will include um, a, a huge number of steps. I think it's about 20 or so, so you can undo quite a lot if you do go wrong. Uh, that's a, a common thing that you might want to click on as you're working through if you make a mistake. Lastly then, um, here are my kind of top tips for Photoshop as you're working through in your earlier lessons. Um, first thing, do not experiment with the tools. It's really tempting. I know on a lot of software we, we like you to experiment with them and, and get to use them. But all the tools, all the buttons and the settings, 
don't experiment, don't just draw on screen if you don't know what you're doing. If you're not sure, just put your hand up and get a, a quick recap off the teacher uh, or off the support staff um, or even a friend. But if you experiment, that's when things start to go wrong and sometimes it can take 20 minutes or so to, to fix what it is that you've done. Um, we've covered Control alt z already, so Control alt z for stepping backwards more than once. Uh, and then the last one, these three things that you can press if you make a mistake or if things aren't responding as you would expect them to. So the first one, this is what I'm going to do when I walk over to your screen. If you say, sir, this isn't working, first thing I'm going to get you to do is to press the enter key. Now by pressing the enter key, it's going to finish off anything that you're halfway through. Um, so it might be that you've started something and it hasn't quite worked out. So we press the enter key and that will finish it. The escape key will actually come out of that setting. So if you're in a setting that you didn't want to be, that will take us out of it and allow you to carry on as we would. And then the, the control Oh, uh, sorry, Control and D. Um, Control D allows you to deselect anything that you've selected on screen. So it might be you've selected a couple of pixels right in the middle of nowhere, uh, and then you're trying to use the paintbrush. Well, if you've got something selected, you're only allowed to paintbrush or to, to, to paint within that selection. So by pressing Control D, that deselects, stops selecting that, and then we can use the paintbrush wherever we wanted to on the page. So those three settings should fix most of the mistakes for you. Um, but those are the three kind of top tips um, that I'd like you to have a look at using if things don't respond as you would expect them to. So, quick recap, don't experiment with things if you're not sure, ask a friend, ask a member of staff, someone there that can help you. Um, the next step, if you go wrong, Control alt z to step backwards, that's the first thing I'm going to do, and then if something isn't responding as you would expect it to, try this kind of the, the three step rule, so we've got enter, escape and control and D to, to fix any tool that isn't working as you would expect it to. Okay, now I've shown you the, the basics behind Photoshop. Um, we're gonna go ahead and launch Photoshop now, which you'll do by going start all programs on Photoshop. Um, I'm gonna just click on the, the bottom bar down here in order to open it. Um, just like this, there we go. And we're going to go to file and new. You'll notice on mine here, I, I, on Apple Macs, um, Photoshop doesn't actually have a kind of a background to it, a table to it if you like. Um, so it, it has the kind of the wallpaper here, it's just showing through. So I'm going to go file and new, I'm going to rename the, the document Gartry ADT TV, I'm going to change it to International Paper A4. And I'm going to pretend I'm printing off a document here, so we need to be 300 dpi or pixels per inch and the colour mode is probably the only thing I'm going to change so I'm not going to go down to 72, I'm going to leave it at 300 and I'm going to change the colour mode to CMYK because that's what colour mode my printer uses and once we've got that all set up we can go ahead and press OK. So here's my document, you all should fill the screen, I'm going to have to just make mine slightly wider. Um, now we've got that kind of table background to it. Now. The settings on the right hand side change depending on what you've, you've last had open. So sometimes it's a good idea to just go window, workspace and reset your essentials or reset your workspace just so that everything looks the same every time you open it up because sometimes we do change these settings. Um, so we've got all the tools down the left hand side that we've introduced to you. Um, we've got the paintbrush here and if we click and hold on the paintbrush you can see that we've got uh, some of the settings that are similar. We've got the blending, uh, sorry, gradient tool here so um, it blends from one colour to the next and if we wanted to put a, a paint bucket fill onto the background we'd need to add a new layer in first so hover in the bottom right hand corner down here to add that new layer in because every time we add something new it's going to go in on a new layer. And we've got our colours here that we can choose from. I've got web safe colours so, uh, chosen at the moment, I'm just going to turn that off so I can choose any colour I like. So we choose it from the rainbow first of all. Let's say I want maybe um, a kind of a colour that's already used on the page. If I move my mouse off to the side here, I can click using the eyedropper and actually suck a colour up. But it has to be on the page in order to choose that. I want a sky blue today, so I'm going to choose blue first of all. And then from this large blending colour here, I'm going to choose sky blue. And you can see that I've still got two colours chosen, so I'm going to choose uh, grey as my background colour. So I can flick between those two colours. So if I want to just click now, you'll see blue's at the front, so blue's what's going to be. If I use the arrows, swap to grey at the front, so then I click with grey. If I want to reset those to black and white, uh, I can do. So blue at the front, grey behind, blue's back on now. But if I want to reset, we go to black and white there. If I want to change it to white, we can click with white. And let's go back to black for a minute. There we go. 
Now, that layer there, it appears, it's black, we've got a quick preview, and we've also got a button here to choose whether or not we want that image to be visible. Sometimes it can be useful to just turn something off to see what's going on. Um, it might be that we want to make something a little bit see-through, so we've got opacity for that layer, so you've got to make sure you're on the right layer first, but we can drop that opacity, how see-through that layer is, down to whatever percentage we like. It might be full 100, it might just be a couple of percent if we're adding an effect on to say whether or not we're going to see that black layer. Let's leave it as full opacity at the moment. Um, and let's add some text on. So grab the text tool on the left-hand side or T on your keyboard. I've got a, a wicked font at the moment called Beyond the Mountains installed that I'm using for a school project. Um, and we've got the colour. Now, obviously, if we have black text on a black background, we're not going to see it. So let's go for a nice kind of turquoise colour. If I just click one click and start writing let's have the word welcome here, that text box will grow to fit that word. Now we click the text box to finish, or we could click and drag with our text box to have a, a predetermined size. It might be that we wanted a big text box like that. Now, if we grab the move tool in the top left hand corner, we can move each of those. But if we just grab the text box tool and click, you'll notice it puts us back into the text box, which you don't always want to do. So it's best to use the move tool if you want to move something around rather than doing it within the text box. So flicking backwards and between, backwards and forwards between those two settings, between those two tool, tools is um, the best way to work. Now I've got auto select turned on there. You'll see if I turn auto select off, which is the default for you, you'll notice it doesn't matter where I click on screen, I have to be on the right layer in order to move something. So if I want to move that one, I have to be on that layer or the other layer for the other text box. Okay, so I want to start manipulating uh, one of these layers here. I've got the word welcome written out twice. Um, the I don't know which one's which though, because you know sometimes you can have so many layers it can get a bit confusing. So just by tapping on each of these eyes here, I can see that the layer that I want is in fact this one here. It's the top layer. And I'm going to press Control and T on my keyboard, which is going to allow me to transform this shape. Now that gives us those nodes that you might get on Word a lot more easily actually just by tapping on, a, on, on a, an object on Word. Um, but we can press Control T in order to get those up on Photoshop because you can imagine lots of layers, it could get a bit confusing. So let's swap over to the other layer, Control and T. I'm going to make this look like it's kind of sitting behind, perhaps a little bit more see through. So I'm going to drop the opacity down first of all. Let's go to something in the 40s, yeah, about 45, that looks good. And then this one in front, I'm going to change the colour. Let's go for white maybe. So we double click on that text box to go into it and can change the settings at the top. I'm going to add a shape to the page now. So rectangle tool on the left hand side. Just click and drag and it lets us draw the shape just as you might imagine. And you can see at the top we've got blue chosen as the colour. Um, so it's coming up in that lovely turquoise blue. Now text box, I'm going to do a text box that fills the page. Now you can see as I drag across it's going to kind of add these smart guides on that, that give me other suggestions of where I might want to let go. But I want it to go you know, roughly about there, somewhere up to the edge of the page maybe. And I'm going to put a little message in here, welcome to Gartry ADT. There we go. Now I've made a mistake here on purpose, because I'm going to show you um, what happens when you rasterize a shape. Now if I want to start manipulating this shape here, um, I'm going to need to rasterize it first of all. So I've shown you rasterizing already. Um, I've said I've got this kind of this capitalization on the letter C here I want to get rid of later, but don't worry about that yet. So right click and rasterize, and you'll see now I can't double click to get back into that shape. If I was to double click on Word Welcome, on that letter T, yeah, there we go, it takes back in. But if I double click on here, it's going to just give me the blending options, which I don't want. So if I want to change something, I need to make sure I've not rasterized it. So Control Alt Z, go backwards, go back into the text box, make sure I'm happy with it. In fact, I'm going to change the color while I'm here. Let's go for something else. I might go for quite a bright purple color. You can only go so bright because remember, our printer can only print certain bright colors. So yeah, about there. Then I can rasterize, check my spellings. Yes, I'm happy. Right click and up to rasterize there in the middle. And now I can do all sorts to it. We can do things like edit, transform, and let's say we want to warp it about. I'm going to make this look a little bit more like it's been kind of handwritten because if you, if you were to handwrite something, all your letters aren't going to be necessarily exactly the same size. So I'm going to just move these nodes about a bit. Loads of ways we can manipulate with warp. That's the way that we do the typography portraits. So, yeah, 
dragging from the corners first of all, then dragging the diagonals, and then dragging from the center of the shape. It's looking a little bit stretched, but don't worry because we can change that afterwards by pressing Control T on the whole layer. There we go, just pull it upwards and outwards a little bit. That's looking cool, that's looking like it's been handwritten now. Great. Let's double click and go on some blending options for that layer then. I'm still not quite happy with the colour. So let's go to colour overlay. Now colour overlay is going to change everything on that layer to a single colour. It defaults to red, but yeah, that looks great. It might be that I want to put an outline around it, so we talked about outline already, so stroke. What colour should we go for? Oh gosh, that looks awful, doesn't it? But you can see how the outline works. Let's turn that off for a minute. But you'll see the shape, we didn't rasterize that shape, so we can just double click on the blue and change the color of that straight away if we want to. So we go for a darker color. Okay. So all of these layers are represented slightly differently here. We've got quite an array for you to see. It's looking okay. Some things I would change. So we're going to press Control Alt Z Z Z Z Z and go backwards. Let's go into some of the blending options. Let's experiment with the shadow. Now I've turned the shadow on, but we can't see it. We can't see it because it's a black shadow on a black background. So let's turn it to normal and let's go for a white shadow. It's unusual, but hey, it might look interesting. We've got things here that we can manipulate. So we have the size of the shadow the spread of the shadow and the distance that shadow is going to actually travel before it hits the surface, how see-through that shadow is going to look. So sometimes it's nice to add just a very subtle shadow, and that one's just 16%, but it looks nice. We can add a glow on. Now the glow colour defaults to this kind of pale yellow. We want a nice white glow on this, I think. Up the spread and up the size a little bit. Press OK, it's looking cool. Maybe go into colour overlay. Let's sample that blue up from the, the, the bar that we've used on the page, it looks nice. And we're going to rasterize that bar actually and copy the layer style so all of those uh, effects that we've put on and paste those onto that block so we've taken the effects and you'll see taken those effects from the welcome to Gartry ADT and we've applied those onto the bar so we've now got very similar effects going on both that's quite a quick way to work let's turn on auto select and just move the word welcome up a little bit more so I don't have to find the right layer because I've turned on auto select I can just click and drag around and maybe make that back one less kind of uh, intrusive, knock it back a bit with the opacity. And there we go. So that's a, a quick little um, a quick little document that we've created. It's taken us a few minutes, but we've used most of the tools that I've introduced to you. There's uh, some of the tools that we could use, but I think that's where we're going to leave it today. Mm -hmm.